One of the famous podcasters, along with his friend, got the opportunity to visit the inside of the cartel. They were scared as well as excited to explore the underworld. They were able to unveil the story of the most famous drug cartels and the life they lead. Who led the Sinaloa and Guadalajara cartel? What kind of life do they live? Ismael Zambada Garca, alias El Mayo, the last surviving member of the so-called Old Guard, is at the center of a continuing internal rivalry for control of the group's operations against the now-incarcerated former Sinaloa cartel leader Joaquin Guzman Laura, alias El Chapo, who reportedly had many children. The Chapitos are a group of these Chapitos. There has been a lot of bludged as the two inside factions fight it out, even though neither party has yet to demonstrate the kind of authority that would reveal who is accountable for the group's criminal activities. The Chapitos grew stronger in 2021 and 2022, eventually ranking among the top makers and exporters of fentanyl and methamphetamine to the United States. In Sinaloa, Chihuahua, Sonora, and Beja, California, they increased their territorial dominance. They also increased their financial gain by participating in illicit mining, fishing, migrant smuggling, and other activities. They were recognized as the 2022 Inside Crime Criminal Winners. On January 5, 2023, Ovidio Guzman Lopes was detained for the following time in Sinaloa, dealing them a blow that resulted in a significant escalation of violence that claimed the lives of over 20 dozen people. Even though El Chapo is said to have a large family, only four of them, Joaquin Guzman Lopes, Ovidio Guzman Lopez, Ivan Archivaldo Guzman Salazar, and Gis Alfredo Guzman Salazar, have played significant roles in the Sinaloa cartel's illegal activities. Ovidio, Ivan, and Jess Alfredo were reportedly introduced into the Sinaloa cartel's criminal operations when they were just adolescents to learn the ins and outs of the organization from their father in Omeo. The person who has received the most notice in recent years is Ovidio, who was sanctioned by the Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, of the U.S. Treasury Department in 2012 and inducted in February 2019. For many years, the U.S. has demanded Guzman's return. The State Department offered a $5 million reward in December 2021 for intelligence that resulted in Guzman and each of the Chapitos being apprehended and found guilty. Guzman has been accused in the U.S. of conspiring to smuggle weed, methamphetamine, and cocaine into the country. According to the State Department, Guzman is in charge of methamphetamine production facilities in Sinaloa that produce 3,000 to 5,000 pounds of the substance each month. Information, according to the State Department, also showed that he had commanded the killing of several people, including a well-known Mexican singer who had declined to perform at his wedding. The Guadalajara Cartel, once regarded as one of Latin America's most potent drug trafficking organizations, was founded by Coro Quintero, who is regarded as one of the founding fathers of Mexican drug trafficking. In the 1970s, Coro Quintero transported a significant amount of marijuana from Mexico to the United States in collaboration with Gallardo, Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo, and Pedro Avilas Perez. In 1985, he was in charge of the abductions of Enrique Kiki Camarena of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, Alfredo Zavala Avalar, John Clay Walker, a journalist from the U.S., and Alberta Radalat, a dental student. Curro Quintero escaped to Costa Rica after the killings but was later apprehended and transported back to Mexico, where he was given a 40-year murder sentence. The Tijuana, Sinaloa, and Juarez Cartels all absorbed the leaders of the Guadalajara Cartel after his capture, and the Guadalajara Cartel itself dissolved. Even though these cartels have similar ways of criminal activity, they are quite different from each other. Different people headed the Guadalajara and Sinaloa Cartels, and their leadership only briefly overlapped. One of the Guadalajara cartel's executives and a co-founder, Rafael Coro Quintero. He was in charge of bringing significant amounts of cocaine and weed into the country illegally. For the murder of a DEA employee, for which he was apprehended in 1985 and given a 40-year prison term, he was eventually released in 2013. Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo was the co-founder and head of the Guadalajara cartel. He was in charge of coordinating the cartel's activities in drug dealing and extending its power across Mexico. He was detained in 1989 and is now in a Mexican jail, serving a 37-year sentence. In Mexico, both cartels have been involved in significant acts of violence and bloodshed, which have resulted in numerous deaths of innocent citizens who were trapped in the middle of drug-related conflicts. The Mexican government has been attempting to dismantle these criminal groups 
but law enforcement agencies continue to face significant difficulties due to their strength and impact. A complex history of collaboration and conflict exists between the Guadalajara cartel and the Sinaloa cartel. When the Guadalajara cartel was still in power in the 1980s, the Sinaloa cartel was a lesser organization that operated as a subgroup under the Guadalajara cartel's leadership. The Sinaloa cartel, on the other hand, arose to power and eventually became one of the most potent drug-dealing organizations in Mexico after the Guadalajara cartel's leadership was overthrown by the Mexican government. The Sinaloa cartel and the surviving Guadalajara cartel have engaged in violent battles over territory and routes used for drug trafficking despite their prior alliance. The two cartels have a history of cooperating with other organized crime groups in order to increase their impact and power. One of the most noteworthy battles between the two cartels took place in 2008 when a convoy of vehicles transporting Sinaloa cartel members was attacked by a group of heavily armed gunmen. Several individuals were killed in the attack, which was thought to have been carried out by members of the Guadalajara cartel's remnants. There have been times when the two cartels were relatively at peace, but their continuing rivalry still contributes to the bludged in Mexico. Though the deep-seated corruption and potent criminal networks make it a difficult and ongoing challenge. The Mexican government has been working to fight drug trafficking and organized crime. Residents of Curro Quintero's native Bataraguado, Sinaloa, recall them as a benefactor in the area in the 1980s. Curro Quintero allegedly contributed to electrifying Bataraguado and provided for the construction of a 40-kilometer, 25-mile highway, according to an interview with the town's mayor conducted in 2013. Getting into and out of Bataraguado used to take days of journey, as the mayor recalled before the highway was built. Curro Quintero spoke with Preciso magazine on July 24, 2016, while she was still on the run. He asserts that he didn't murder Enrique Camarena in this conversation. He claimed to the reporter that El Chapo Guzman and Ismael El Mayo Zambada paid him separate visits after his release from jail. He says he informed them he didn't want to go back to the company. He also disclosed to the reporter that he was no longer a drug trafficker and that his only goal in life was harmony. The Sinaloa Cartel is a drug trafficking organization in Mexico that mainly operates in the country's northwest. The gang was still active and regarded as one of the most potent drug cartels in the world as of my knowledge cut off in September 2021. The Mexican government and law enforcement have attempted to break up the group and stop its illegal actions, though. Several high ranking members of the Sinaloa Cartel, including its former leader, Jokin El Chapo Guzman, who is presently receiving a life sentence in the United States, have been detained or killed recently. Despite these initiatives, the Sinaloa cartel is still active and a significant player in the illicit drug trade, including the importation of cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine. The gang is infamous for its complex system of corruption and bribery, as well as its violent methods, which include kidnapping and murder. Mexican drug kingpin Rafael Curro Quintero, was formerly one of the top figures in the long-gone Guadalajara cartel. He gained notoriety for his role in the 1985 murder of DEA employee Enrique Kiki Camarena. Rafael Curro Quintero is currently listed as a wanted person for the year 2021. On a technicality, he was freed from prison in Mexico in 2013, but the Mexican government subsequently issued an arrest warrant for him in connection with the killing of Camarena. He is a wanted fugitive in both nations, with warrants for his arrest issued in both the United States and Canada. In recent years, there have been reports of sightings and alleged action involving Curro Quintero, but the location of this person is unknown to the general public. It is still being sought after by Mexican and American law enforcement agencies, who are both offering rewards for information that leads to his arrest. A combination of historical, economic, social, and political factors, such as the expansion of drug production and trafficking, governmental corruption, poverty and inequality, and the desire for illegal drugs, led to the formation of drug cartels, the prohibition of drugs which produced a secret market and gave criminal organizations the chance to make money from the sale and distribution of drugs, was a major factor in the emergence of these drug cartels. Do you think there is an end to the fight between these drug cartels? Would they lead a peaceful life in the future? Let us know in the comments.